Hello, natural hair care class. Um, this is my sister Stacy. Yep, she's gonna be my model today for the lock maintenance demonstration. Um, I'm gonna throw you, show you three uh, techniques for lock maintenance. Um, we're gonna do a retwist on her. I'm only gonna do a few retwists on it because she actually has sister locks and generally that's not a common way for uh, tightening sister locks, but I'm just gonna show that method to you just for the sake of, you know, education. Um, for that, I'm going to use this little concoction that I have here, something that I mixed up. I would tell you what it is, but if I did, I'd have to kill you. And I love you all, so I'm not gonna do that. I will let you know that there is some shea butter and a little bit of coconut oil in there. But we're probably gonna just do the nape section with that so that I can show you a bit of um, uh, retwisting and palm rolling on how you would do that for locks. After that, we're gonna go and we're gonna use a latching method. I have two different tools that I'm gonna use for the latching method. It is um, your traditional latch hook. So the latch hook, it has the, um, the hook on the, the tip like a candy cane and then there's this latch that clasps down so when you put, push it through whatever you're going through then on your way down that latch closes and helps pull the hair through so I'm going to show you how to use it re um, tighten it with this one and then this right here is also it's a lock retightening tool and this one is more traditional for sister locks so um and it is my favorite for her because as you see, there's about 10 million of the locks up here and it goes a little bit faster. Get her sectioned off and we'll get started. Um, at the end, I'm gonna show you a styling method for her. We're gonna do a braid out. Um, the because she likes that it tends to um, last a while for her the benefit of sister locks is that because they are so small they're a little bit more versatile to style so you can do a lot of the same things you would with natural hair get um, some of the same looks and have a lot of definition maybe um i'll have her post some pictures of some different styles that she's done on at the end of this video but we're just going to do a braid out and then um it should be dried by tomorrow maybe the next day and then she'll add that to the end of the video uh the braid out method too is going to be really good for all three forms of our locking method just because um it'll reduce us having to use clips so for the latch hook and the and the needle hook you don't need to um, hook anything down just because it stays in place but with the um, the twisting method so that it's not unraveling while you're working you have to put clips on it but what I do is I clip so many of them and once I get so many done then I go back and braid those sections together and then that keeps me from having to have a hundred hooks or clips in her hair okay so off the section Let's give her a push button. That's fine. I don't mind if there's bloopers on there. Okay. They know I'm awkward and weird like that. So. I have her hair sectioned off into four sections. Um, the nape area, I have two sections in the parietal ridge and then one section in the top of the crown. This back section is, probably not even that whole section, is where I'm gonna do the, um, the retwist method. I have to spray this down because the retwist has to be done wet. The rest of it is done dry though.
bit. Um, I went ahead and did the back uh, with the latch method with the needle. That's my favorite. So I'm going to demonstrate on the sides here. <laughs> oh, more? Okay. Got that COVID waistline right now. <laughs> um, yeah. So, and I'll demonstrate real quick. So, all right. All right, so with the hook, like again, I showed you that this is a, it has like a little candy cane hook at the top with a little latch that is on there so that when you stick it through whatever you're going through, the latch is down. But then when you come back through, that latch lifts up, locks in whatever is inside of that hook so that you can pull it through. Um, you can use this one. Some benefits of this is just it's a little bit bigger so it depends on like your hands or whatever but the hook size is a little bit big so sometimes you can end up making them a little too tight or it's a little bit painful so the method with this one is going to be the same method as with the needle which i'll show you again as with the needle the um the difference is just the way they're they grab onto the hair so with um going in you want to go in and you go into where the new growth is you use the the stem of the hook to push down so you can reach where the hair is locked at then i'll take the end of the hair put that in the hook and i'm going to pull it through to loop it in there so and i'm going to continue to do that until this lock is tight to the scalp now but what i have to do is i can't continue to go through the same section over and over again so i have to go an alternate direction so now, since I went from right to left, now I'm gonna go from bottom to top, go through. Then this time I will go diagonally. And left to right. And just keep doing it until it gets tight. You wanna monitor how tight you're getting as you go because you always want your last loop which i think i can get two more in so i'm going to go left to right on this one right to left on this one because you always want your last loop to be to pull the hair in the direction you want it to lay so since i want it to lay down i'm going to come from the bottom hook it so that when i pull that hair through it's laying down okay There are hooks that are like this that are a lot smaller um, for that you can get at you know different beauty supply stores that are used for microbeads and stuff like that. The challenge with those is they are a little sharp and the hook is so tiny that sometimes you can't get the end of the um, the lock in there for um, for sister locks because these are so tiny it works good. But for like if you're doing regular traditional size or a little bit larger, it's a little bit harder. So now something that I wanted to show you, like say for instance, if I did go through one section and you constantly go the same way each time, what happens is you end up splitting that, um, that lock into two because you're just twisting it around and around and around. Now that's bad if that's not what you want to do, but this is a method that I have used on clients before that maybe have started their locks and their locks were too big. And we've gone through a few treatments where I've just gone through the same way a few times so that they are, we can thin their locks out. And once you get them to a certain length, you'll cut the main lock off or you can trim the, the lock in half and then palm roll it back together so that you can thin their locks out but we don't want to thin her locks out because Lord knows they're thin enough. So, and then she has the mane of a God. So we are on, I think I'm at the 3 millionth braid right now. We still have approximately 7 million to go and we should be finished. You started them, you made them this small. So again, I'm on my last one. So I'm going to take that one and I'm going to pull that through so that my last one, eh, I don't think it's tight enough, so I'm gonna kinda do it a bit. 
go through one more time. You also want to be careful not to go too tight when you're doing that. So that one, that's a good um, tightness to the scalp. You don't want to see the scalp bubbling. You definitely don't want to hear your client say, ow. And uh, um, for multiple reasons, especially here around the front of the hairline, where the hair is generally finer, you don't want to put a lot of tension on it because you can cause a lot of breakage in um, the lock because this is the area where she's pulling her hair back. So if you have it so tight that as she's pulling it, that hair is breaking off. And then also because we lighten her hair, we know that her hair is fragile also. So I don't want to make it so tight that I'm causing that hair to break as well. You can see around here that she just, her and my mom have the same thing, that if you make a part, then hair grows in it. You pick the hair up and you make a section, then hair goes, oh, look, there's an empty spot. We can grow there. And so no matter how many times we fill this in, by the time her next um, section grows, and, and you'll see the lock, you can still see the locks that we put there from the last time, but more hair just tends to grow in. So, but well, I'll show you, well, you'll see, I ain't gonna show you. You're gonna see what it looked like when we get that. All right, so I'll do a couple more like this. With this needle, on it, on it, on it, because I thought, <laughs> yeah, oof, you said it. I'm gonna edit, <laughs> edit, it's called editing. <laughs> That's gonna be in the blooper. <laughs> edit. Okay, here we go. The the needle. So if you take a look at some of the features of the needle, see how it's wide in the center, so you can feed the lock in, and then it's narrow at the end, so that that holds the lock while you're um while you're feeding it through the new growth. Um, we've used different ones in the past. She's tried this one. This one's okay. She had another one that I liked better that the end of it was a little bit tighter. So, but, um, cause for it. her smaller locks, it just holds the hair a little better, but it's okay. It's still faster. Um, and then you can see that the way the needle is, how it gets wide and then it goes narrow and it's curved so that you're, um, going away from the scalp. You have like wide needles that you can get like this sort of from like a, a crafting store but it's not quite the same what's the name of this needle called i remember you i remember you just looked it up i'll insert it down below because i she'll forgot. insert it down below because she forgot getting old is for the birds but, <laughs> <laughs> but. and we're going through i'm gonna go in from left to right Gonna go down at an angle, top to bottom, kind of going clockwise. Uh, and you see how much quicker it is with the needle because the hair just kind of stays in there, going then from bottom to top. Ooh. Okay, we're gonna go from right to left just because I think we're getting to the end of that. Left, yep. And so our last one, we want to make sure I'm going to go from top to bottom so that it is laying in the direction that we want it to hang. Some of the benefits of doing it this way, of doing an interlocking versus twisting, is um, one, the hair locks faster. I know for myself, like when I had a few of like younger clients that started locks, and they're athletes. And so you can do different um, twisting methods, but then they wear like football hem helmets or they're sweating all the time and they gotta wash their hair all the time. This way, once you put it in, the, it's locked. There's, you don't have to worry about it coming loose. So, and then also with people with um, tighter coils, you get more length. Um, you keep, you can see more of your length right away rather than with the coiling method. Um, sister locks are kind of, um, it's a method, it's a, it's a tinier lock, but it's, um, it was developed, it was a way of starting locks before, without having to be natural. So when people were transitioning out of relaxers, you, you can start sister, sister locks. Generally it started, uh, if it's on relaxed hair with braids, that's how we started hers is we went through and we braided her hair 
I put all 10 million braids in by myself. And then, um, and then it probably took what a good year. So because of the braiding is it's different from the coil. What causes the lock is as the hair sheds and rests inside the hair, that's what begins the hair to lock and bud. But because the smoothness of the braid, it took a little longer for the hair to lock. And she's um her her hair texture is a lot smoother and finer. So it took a while before um we began to see it lock. And then because the hair was stretched out and thin from braids, the locking method is um, a way to keep the lock thinner and to, to continue to um, to mimic that braided technique so that the, the locks also, uh, she still keeps her length as she goes, which some people just tend to like a little bit better. Different strokes. The difference in them is that um, you can kind of see like with the twisting method, you do pick up a little bit more hair. Your parts are a little bit cleaner and it's not as fuzzy. Over time with the, um, with the locking method, all those do go away. From time to time, I do need to go in and I'll trim her locks up, but for the most part, they stay pretty good and they're not too fuzzy. And you can see, you know, so, and especially like, any type of fuzz we get when we go in and we color her hair, um, it uh, it kind of takes care of that and it encourages it to beat up. The ends of her hair took ever two years at least mm -hmm. to start budding. And like I was back here, I can't show you because they're in the braid out, but there's some that are in the back that you can still see the braid clear as day.
There we go. Thank you, sister. Oh, no, thank you, sister. No, sister, thank you. No, thank you, sissy. <laughs> You're <welcome. laughs> All right. Oh, we'll see. <laughs> so note to self, don't do that. <laughs> um, we'll show you the finished results in a couple days, and then, you know, well, you'll see it in a couple seconds. Check me out, check me out. Boom, bam, bam, bop. Bada bop, boom. Pow. Oh!